So I'm going to make another an miniature angel wing wreath and I am using again these forms that I have made. Uh, they are about nine and a half inches tall and four and a half wide. Um, they're like miniature carrot forms that we are turning into angel wings. And I'm going to put um, this plastic canvas on. This is the five mesh plastic canvas that you can get at Joanne Fabrics. You can get it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. They are in the yarn section. And what I want to do here, I'm going to attach these to the plastic canvas before I even cut anything out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just use four inch zip ties, kind of attach these to the bottom. Okay, now I want to attach this one to this side. Then I'm going to attach these right here in the middle. And then attach on this side. I will attach more because it, it's not going to hurt, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to cut these zip ties off or cut the excess off. So now I'm just going to use uh, some scissors and just cut around the edge. And that's it. Okay, so now I have these wings. If you can, if you notice, they do kind of still flop around a little bit. So I'm going to use wooden dowel rods. I got these from Joey, uh, no, I got these from Walmart. Um, they're just, you know, very simple dowel rods. Nothing ma you know, major about them. You are, if you were gonna be sticking this into the ground, you were going to need uh, five, okay? This one I'm going to cut in half, as close to half as you possibly can. Okay, um, that would be about half right there. And I just use my wire cutters, cut that right in half, okay? Yeah, it's a little bit longer on one side. We'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna turn this over because this wire sticks out a little bit further than the plastic canvas. So that's going to be our front. This is going to be the back. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use four inch zip ties to attach here and here. This, these dowel rods to the back of the angel wings. That way it'll kind of help to um, just stabilize it. It won't flop back and forth things like that, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I do this real quick. Okay, I'm just gonna use four inch zip ties. And I'm gonna say right about here, right where these two kind of start to meet. I'll do one right there. And I'm not going to go too, too tight. I'm going to make sure I have the other side good here. I'm going to tighten them up because I'm happy where that one is. Okay. Then just a little bit below there, let's say um about two inches below go ahead and attach the other one and i'm pushing and they're not really going anywhere so so we're good now i know this is going to go into the ground 
Um, I didn't do this before, but here, let me show you less floppage. Okay. So I didn't do this before when I made my other mini wing wreath, but when I attach the dowel rods at the end, let me just say there were a lot of curse words. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach these now and just work around them as I'm putting the petals on. Okay. Let me put these out of the way. So let's do one for each. Okay. And I'm just going to do like right along here. Okay. Here and here. Yeah, it's going to be a little over to the side. It's not going to be exactly in the center and that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and just put the zip ties in two places and just make sure I'm going straight down. And I'll just go ahead and do that over here too while I'm at it. Okay, I'll just have them like right about there. So just don't even skip a hole, go in out the very next hole. Okay, so we used three so far. Now what I am going to do, I'm going to add two more. If I can get them out of the bag. Okay. And what I want to do is right here on the inside, kind of have these attached to each other. Probably right about here. Uh, you know what, I'll go up just a little bit, but we're going to need to attach this twice because if you just attach it in one spot, it's going to be a little wobbly. So we're going to have to attach it in two different spots. So I'll do I'll do one by itself. Kind of see I came out right there. I'm going to go in on that same row of holes here and come out. And then here I'm going to kind of go around both. And make sure I'm coming out the same same hole that I am coming out of the one previous that I just put in. Okay. Good and tight. See, like it's not going anywhere. Yeah, I just wanted to make this go down a little bit further because you figure the um, the petals are going to come probably at least down to here. So we want to have some space between the ground and the petals. So, it, and you want it to go down a, a minimum of four inches. So we're going to be good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same over here. And we're not going anywhere. It's good. So cut these off. Okay. I think I'm finally ready to work on the petals. Okay. 
So this is what we are starting with. And so I am going to show you how I am making the petals now, okay? Okay, so I have my glass cutting board out. Yes, it is extremely dirty. I know. Um, and I am going to be using a wood burning tool. This is the wood burning tool that I use. Um, I have a spare on hand because you never know if you're going to drop it too many times or anything like that. But here it is. It is, I am using the chisel tip and I will be uh, cutting my mesh with that. We also need to fuse it and everything like that. So you definitely need a wood burning tool for this. This is a 10 inch roll of white poly burlap, okay? I like using poly burlap. Um, fabric mesh works well. It works okay. I like the poly burlap much better with this style of petal because I'm going to, this is going to be cut in five inches, okay? So what I'm gonna do, this is my 10 inch mark here. I'm gonna go to five inches and just go a little bit longer, just slightly over that five inch mark and go within the lines of the poly burlap, okay? So there's that. And I want to show you, I don't know if you can see this. See how that is smoking? It is very bad for your lungs. You should definitely wear a mask when you are cutting poly burlap, um, any mesh actually, and be in a well ventilated area. I, when I'm not on camera, I will have my fan blowing um, if it's nice outside, I'll have my window open. Actually, I'm in a, in a downstairs garage, so I will have my garage door open uh, listening to the birds. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut here. So we're making it a five by five piece of poly burlap. Okay, so I will be making two different petals one for the left wing, one for the right wing. Okay, so what I like to do, I will have my good finished edge on the top and always, just because I'm right-handed, okay, I will take my left bottom and bring it up and bring it to right underneath where that finished edge ends, okay? Adjust it however you have to and take your time and go from that tip, that corner, down to the folded edge. Okay, so, and you will see this fuses together. Okay, so there's that. I have the fused side there finished side here. Now I'm going to put the finished edge on the bottom. Again with my left hand, I'll bring it down. Again, taking it to right where that finished edge ends. And I'll explain why we want to do that. So I'm going to kind of get it all good and ready and I'm gonna go from the folded edge to the tip. And I'm fusing this together. So here we have, okay, that sticks out just a little bit. You can go ahead, cut that off, okay? And if for some reason it doesn't fuse very well, just take your wood burning tool, kind of very gently hit the sides of it. It will definitely help it to fuse together, okay? Okay, so 
here I have I have the one piece with the folded edge on the right okay what I want to do I want this finished edge to be on the bottom because what I'm going to do I'm going to turn it over this way so that is up on top I have the finished edge here and the fused edge on the outside well, what I'm going to do I'm going to flip this under and then try to keep this stabilized and I'm going to squish towards the flat folded edge it helps to give this a more rounded look okay so that will be this is going to go on the right wing okay so here we are again I'm going to have that finished edge like facing down and then flip it up and I'd like to leave about a half an inch here maybe a little bit more maybe three quarters flip that under keep this stabilized and squish towards that flat side okay so as you're doing this if you see something like this you definitely want to cut that um and you know what I still had some of that peeking out from behind that finished edge so kind of work with it if you can get that to go behind it that's great um, any frayed edges just cut them off if you don't like the way that looks you could always take the side of your wood burning tool and kind of touch it up I mean this is probably already cooled down enough that it's not going to do anything but this is basically how our petals are going to look so if you've watched my other videos you know I like to draw lines and stuff like that to know where I am where I want to put zip ties all that I have a line here about one inch up what I was thinking was that I was going to go an inch and a half but these petals are only just slightly more than three inches so I think an inch and a half might be just a little too much so what I'm going to do instead of like measuring by this grid I'm going to measure by the how many holes there are in this plastic canvas because I know five holes is one inch so what I'm going to do I'm going to count six holes up okay so I go from here go one two three four five and six and that is where I want to put my next row of zip ties one two three four five six and and I'm just going to keep doing that until I get just up to about here okay okay so yeah now I'm going to use my six inch zip ties and I'm going to start on the very bottom where I made that line about one inch up I'm going to just do I'm going to do two across so yeah I know that there is going to be kind of in the way okay I'm going to go right next to where that is okay normally I would go skip a hole and come out that was just a little too much for me to do there so just do that okay 
and then I will do another one. Just maybe skip like a couple holes in between. So this time I will go in one hole, skip a hole, come out the other. I like to make, start making, you know, closing the zip tie before I actually put the petal in. Okay. Now, if you wanted to use the four inch zip ties for this, the four inches will definitely work. I just wanted to make sure I was, if I needed to go around these uh, dowel rods that I had enough zip tie that I can do it. That's the reason I got the six inch. But okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I wanna go from the outside in. Okay, so for the next line up, I'm going to do three across. And again, if I have to go in between or like around these dowel rods, that's what I'll do. But I think we should be okay. Um, this side, like I said, this is a little bit further over to the side on here. So I will have to go around the dowel rods there. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go in and then around the form. Okay, so this looks pretty good so far. Okay. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do go four across in the next row. And I'll probably do five. Um, I'm not sure if six will fit up here, but we'll see what it looks like, okay? Okay, so this next one, um, it really doesn't get too, too much wider. And I think five fit really good on here. So I'm just going to go five across again. Um, and I'm going to start kind of angling the petals outwards just a little bit. Not a whole, whole lot, but enough. I'm going to go ahead and from this point I want to make sure that I overlap this way that's why we go from the outside in so I'm going to go from the top down okay so I'm going to start right about here go around the outside of the form And go ahead and just put one in here. Go 
one down. And yes, I'm just eyeballing this. I think I'm going to go ahead and fit one more right in there. I think that looks good. So I'm going to try to do the same thing over here. And as we are going down, like, yeah, this is going straight out, but then kind of we're angling them more down as we are going down. And you don't want to mess with these too much once you get them on here because especially because these are cut in the five by fives they have a better tendency to fray so you definitely don't want to mess around with the mesh too too much so once you get them on there kind of you really want to try to leave them where they are okay so I'm going to go another row down Okay, so yeah, I am going to curve in just a little bit. Um, I may go ahead and just take my Sharpie, make a little line kind of where I want to go. Now I'll do the same right here. Okay. Just kind of give me a little guide. I'm gonna go kind of straight across with that one. This one here, I want to go at a little bit of an angle, like angling down. Okay, so yeah, see how we're going straight out and then you start coming down. So this is still at an angle, but it's it's covering what needs to be covered. And we're good. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so I still don't know if I'm going to have enough because that still, that only leaves me with four left again. But we will put these in and see how it looks. Okay, I think we're at the point I'm probably probably going to need like one, two, three more for each side. Okay. Um, okay that needs to go. Yeah, we got to make sure all the zip ties are covered and things like that. So um, I'm going to have some floral, but I don't know. I think I'm still going to need a couple more petals right there. I think we're going to be okay after that. So I'll be right back after I make a couple more petals. Okay, so I'm going to do the last three. And of course, I'm going to have to go around this dowel rod here. Okay, so yeah, you can see a little bit of the form here and stuff. So 
I'm just going to try to use some florals to get that covered up along with this right here in the center. So I kind of decided on what I was going to do here. There were so many options that I could do, um, but I kind of wanted to make this one in particular um, a... Uh, I wanted to make this for a friend whose father had passed away just a few years ago. So for it to be a little more masculine, I didn't want to use pinks and purples and peaches, um, which I do have these beautiful peach roses, but I didn't think that would work. So I kind of wanted to stick with blues and yellows. Um, I do have these white roses. I got these from Hobby Lobby, already cut them down. Um, I might use these. I haven't decided yet. We'll see, but I got them on hand. I have this, I believe I got from Walmart. Um, it's a nice small leaf because I don't want to use any leaf that is too big okay because this is you know like a small wreath so you want small leaves um i also have this fern like type of greenery but i have these blue forget-me-nots which i think forget-me-nots that's just perfect for anything um you know for someone who has passed away I also have these yellow daisies I think will go together very well. If I decide not to use those daisies, I have these tiny small flowers here, um, very springy. Um, I don't have any butterflies. I have this one that I picked off of an old centerpiece that I had. I gave away all my butterflies. but. I thought that would actually be great to put something like this in there. This is very old. Uh, it's from Dollar Tree even. So I don't think I'll actually use this, but it's a good idea. So at this okay. point, I cut so my florals and greenery down just enough that they don't overpower the wreath, but making sure that they cover any zip ties, the form, and the plastic canvas. I'll try zip tying some of the florals first, but then glue them in as needed and adding more as I go until I'm satisfied with how it looks. So this is my final wreath. So what do you think? I really love the way it turned out. It did end up turning out to be about 14 inches wide and only 13 long, which I think turns out perfect. I think this is great for graveside in which I went ahead and put these dowel rods on in the very beginning because I was specifically making this for graveside. But if you wanted to do this, just don't put these dowel rods here. I would still put these going across because these going across kind of help to keep it from flopping. But the ones going down, these are to stake into the ground. If you don't want to stick it into the ground, you don't have to. Um, this is perfect. You know, this will go on a door. Absolutely. If you wanted to do it in, um, you know, like a photo thing, like how people have like all the different photos on their walls and stuff, like a memory wall, you can put that in there with it. Um, I always thought of putting this 
as a tree topper if you wanted to do a Christmas one and add this as a as a tree topper people would do angel trees year-round you can do something like that so just different things you can do with this but yeah this is what it looks like from the back um, yeah you could probably put something on there to cover it up but this is if it's definitely going graveside it's going to be out in the weather I really wouldn't put any um, any materials on there that could stay wet because I'd be afraid that it would mold so I think this looks okay from the back and really most people are going to look at, at it from the front so we're good and if you found this valuable definitely subscribe to my channel and give this a thumbs up I would really appreciate it my name is Patty Davis I'm with Cricut Tree Creations and I'll see you in our next video